What's up guys, it's Matt with Bleepin' Jeep. In this video, I want to go over everything that I carry on the trail, including tools, spare parts, and everything else, and where I keep it. After you watch this video, I tend to go overboard, so you should have a good idea of everything that you could possibly bring to help yourself in case of an emergency or just a slight breakdown. Let's get started. When people see the Scorpion Crawler in person, they like the toolbox the best. So let's start there. This is not only a toolbox, but also like a trunk lid, I guess. And on top of the trunk lid, I have mounted a power tank. That's a CO2 tank for onboard air. Um, you can run power tools or air up your tires with that. I also have a floor jack. Uh, everybody that breaks down, they usually typically want a floor jack over a high lift jack. So I just prefer to carry a floor jack and it seems to be the preferred method when everybody needs one. For the jack, it's basically a quick release. I made this bracket using a TMR fire extinguisher release bracket. And so there's another knob on this side. You pull it. Oh. And you pull this one and it just pops right out and it goes back in place the same way. Let's take a look at the toolbox itself. I've got a handle here, you pull that up, turn it, and this lifts up. I've got some magnets up top here, so they just magnetize to the cage, which is pretty cool, as long as you don't get your hand trapped in there, which I have done several times. So, inside the toolbox, let's go over a few of the things I've got in here. I have a video of me making this toolbox. I'll leave a link in the description below, but it's Kaizen foam. Each piece is individually cut out, and what's great about that is anytime there is a tool missing, you can see it right away. It's very, very obvious. So every time I go out on a ride beforehand, I'll look through here, and if there's any white showing, I need, I know that I need to go find that tool and make sure it's in its proper place. So in the back here, I've got a breaker bar. I've got wrenches, metric, and standard on each side. I've got socket wrenches. I have a multimeter, um, I have a big hammer, I've got a big crescent wrench for my big hymes, I've got a big screwdriver, I have crescent wrenches in all sizes, I have a multi-tool screwdriver, I have a magnet on a stick, I've got scissors, I've got wire cutters, pliers, needle nose pliers, I've got an assortment of Allen wrenches, I've got razor blades, I have Torx sockets, I have regular sockets in quarter and three eighths, and I don't carry many half inch sockets, but the ones that I know that I need, I have a special place for those here, here, here. Of course, this is the um, 36 millimeter for the unit bearing. I have a flashlight in here, I have a pick, any oddball tools like this 28 millimeter half inch socket. I think that's for the pinion nut. And I have adapters, of course, electrical tape, plumber's tape. I think that's about it in here. I've got a little tray that I built right up here. So if I'm working on something and I need to, I know that I'll need that tool again, I can just put them right here. Or if I'm in a hurry and I don't want to put the tools back, I'll just stick them in this tray until I can finish the job or put them away. Oh, one thing I do want to tell you though, I cut all of these pieces for the big tools with this guy right here. It's just a, a razor with a long end on it. For the round sockets, what I did, you hold these with a pair of pliers, you heat them up with a torch, and then you dip them in the foam, and that'll make the cutout for the socket. A neat little trick with this though, is you want to use a smaller socket for the next bigger hole. That way, these will still fit tight when you're all done. All right, check this out. This is pretty cool. This also pivots and it comes up and then you have a prop rod here. Prop rod comes down and that allows you to get underneath the tool tray to my tool bags and my fluids. Let's check out what I've got in here. So for fluids, this is what I carry. I carry a gallon of antifreeze, concentrated. I carry a gallon of oil. I carry a quart of automatic transmission fluid, a quart of power steering fluid. I carry brake fluid. I carry a quart of gear oil and a funnel. Let's take all these bags out and I'll show you what's inside of them. All right, in bag number one, 
Let's see what we got. So in here, I carry a 3 8 impact. That thing is 250 foot pounds, I believe. And this, a booster pack in case somebody needs a jump on their battery. I also carry paper towels and toilet paper just in case. This one has seen better days. And a pair of gloves. This bag I don't use very often, but you never know. Sometimes you might need some party favors. I have a hose here, which is good for transferring gas. This is one of those ones that you shake to transfer. I have a big strap in case something goes wrong with an axle and you need to get it into place or whatever. I have some half inch sockets that I rarely use. And I have some big zip ties. This one's probably my favorite bag. This is my tire bag, so let me pull everything out. In this bag, I have everything you need to air up your tires or fix a, a patch. Let's say you need to make a patch or a plug. So I've got a bunch of different size patches here. I have an air hose for the power tank. I have the gauge for the power tank. This one is really nice. It's got oil in there. Uh, these, I don't know if you've seen these, I sell them on my website. They're called the Ultimate Tire Valve System, the Colby Valve. And you can replace the valve stem from the outside. So it's always great to have these. And on a trip, um, a couple weeks ago, I used more than I had because people kept on tearing their valve stems off. Inside this little bag here is everything you need to replace a puncture. So you've got those tools to put a plug in. And I have a tool here to do a patch on the inside. So when you do a patch on the inside, you have to take the tire off the wheel. You grind it with this. I have a video on this, of course. And basically you use some of these tools to put the patch on. I've got valve stems. I've got the valve stem core remover. And in here I have the plug. There it is, rubber cement. If you're doing a plug or a patch, it's good to have this rubber cement. And yes, it's cement, not cement. This next bag has duct tape. It has this miniature toolbox, which I'll show you in a second. On the Cherokee, the CPS sensor goes out a lot, so I have a spare CPS sensor in here. Wire, more wire, grease gun, Bailing wire, that comes in handy sometimes. I have a coil, always handy to have a coil. I have a bunch of those little clips for your U-joints. I have, oh, this. I've never had to use this, but in an emergency, this is a chainsaw, a hand-operated chainsaw. If you need to cut down a tree and get it out of your way. That'd be like if a, if a branch came across the road and you need to cut it to, to move forward. I also have another crankshaft position sensor for some reason. I have U-joints, U-joints, and a rotor button. Let me show you what's in here. In this box, I have nuts and bolts. You can never have enough nuts and bolts of different sizes. This is for your arms, your uppers, and your lowers. Um, unit bearings. U-bolts for your um, U-joints. I've got studs for your wheels, wheel studs. I have long bolts, short bolts, fuses, the big fuses and the little fuses. I have a bunch of butt connectors and splicing stuff. Relay, you always wanna have a couple extra relays just in case. Something that did come in real handy while we were out in uh, Johnson Valley. JB Weld, uh, there's two different types. There's the stick weld and then there's the AB stuff where you mix them together. Um, just any nuts and bolts off your Jeep that you take off and you lose in the garage those are the kind of ones that you need to put in your toolbox. Dielectric grease, Loctite. Oh, lug nuts. I almost forgot about the lug nuts. You always, always, always need to carry spare lug nuts. You lose those on the trail, 
And then they're five miles back there. You have no idea where they were. Lug nuts. Carry those. All right, last bag and we'll move on. Spare oil filter. This one is very rare that you'll need a spare oil filter, but it's happened twice. A stick comes up through the engine bay, jabs right through the oil filter, and punctures it. Nobody thinks to carry a spare oil filter. A big wrench, if you have specific stuff that you know you need, like a specific tool, carry it. Your belt, no matter what kind of vehicle you have, you should always carry a spare belt. This one is the serpentine belt for the 4.0. Pipe wrench. Hoses. It's always good to have a selection of hoses. Heater hoses, vacuum hoses, fuel hoses. And then on the sides here, I've got more pockets. This one carries my big strap. I think that's a 30-footer. And this is an extra power steering pump. Now, you might not need a power steering pump, but if it's something that goes out often for you, or anything that goes out often, you should probably carry a spare. Over here, I've got a medical kit, a block of wood in there. That's for the jack, in case I need to get a little higher with the jack. And then in that hole, I have the jack handle. Under here is my fuel cell and my fuel pump. All right, let me show you what I carry inside the console. And here is what you wanna carry the stuff that you use most often. So, if I'm gonna be out west, I carry a dust mask and a pair of goggles. You definitely need those in the west with all the dust. I carry my winch controller. Do not carry this in the back, please. This is a tire gauge, but also a quick deflator. So whenever you need to air down, you should have that handy. Glasses, flashlight, oh, it works. Paper towels, always carry paper towels. I don't use this very often, but infrared thermometer. So if I'm having an overheating issue or somebody else is, or we just wanna check temperatures of something, Super handy to have one of those. WD-40, always a must. I use that to spray down my hymes when they start squeaking. And a pair of gloves. And maybe a map or two of your favorite park. Now, of course, I have a CB in here. And right under my seat, I carry my tree saver. Make sure you keep that in a place where it's super handy. I almost forgot. Quick release fire extinguisher mount. Check this out. Boom! That comes off quick and in a hurry. That's what you need. And I sell these on my website, bleepingjeep.com slash store. Uh, you want to make sure, though, that you mount your fire extinguisher where not only you can get it as the driver, but somebody else outside the vehicle in case you're incapacitated. Super, super important. So it goes without saying, but you should definitely consider having a winch. But if you have the winch, make sure you also have the hardware that goes with it. I don't know how many times we went to recover somebody with a winch and they didn't have the D-ring shackle, whether it's a hard one or a soft shackle like this. You need the equipment to go with your winch as well. So I have a D-ring shackle always attached to the front and the back of my Jeep. I don't usually carry a snatch block, but definitely have needed this a few times in the past couple of months. Now they make the uh, ring that goes with the soft shackle, which I think I'm gonna get one of those. This is like a new technology, the soft shackle. Basically replaces this D-ring shackle and it just pulls through. Telephone! Anyway, you might have seen the video that we did a few weeks ago where the ring, there's a little ring that goes around this and it replaces this big giant snatch block with a much lighter version. I think I'll start carrying one of those. And of course for good morale, you wanna carry a cooler with your favorite drinks and sometimes it's really great to have a hot meal on the trail and that's why I have built this burrito cooker. If you look in there, there's coils that run uh, the engine coolant through those coils. It warms this up to about 210 degrees. Makes you a nice, Chimichanga. I usually have those little plastic frozen chimichangas in there. Awesome. 
Okay, now that's what I carry in the Jeep, but if you're an experienced pro, let me show you what I carry in the truck for the Jeep. All right, guys, if you've been following along, you know that I just got back from Trail to SEMA. Uh, I was away from home 2,000 miles across the country. Now, I typically wouldn't carry all this stuff, but being that far away from home, I knew that I needed to carry every possible thing I could. My Jeep, obviously, as you could tell, is a trailer queen, so I'm always going to have my truck most of the time. Inside my truck, I would, I would typically carry a spare drive shaft front and rear and spare axle shafts for the rear. On the trail to SEMA, though, I also carried spare front axle shafts. Uh, I carried a giant torque wrench, a giant breaker bar, enough fluid to do an entire gear change, so I had four quarts of gear oil. Um, I had all of my deep impact sockets and my big Milwaukee impact. In these boxes down here, I had everything I need to change a gear set. So if I broke a ring and pinion, I could change it once I got back to my truck and, and uh, had access to these tools. Or come back to the truck and take all these tools out to the trail. So I had a ring and pinion, which for me, luckily, the front and rear are the same ring and pinion. I had all the tools to do that job and I had a master gear install set. Um, I do always carry this, a unit bearing. Um, I bought an extra spool just in case. I needed that. Inside this bag here is nitrogen for my air shocks, uh, for my ORIs in case I need to fill them up. Uh, I brought brake clean in case I needed to open the diff cover and clean that out or do a gear change and I bought a clamshell puller in case I needed to do a gear change I could pull bearings off the gears. Other than that I just have some gloves, rags and of course tie downs for the Jeep on the trailer and a spare tire. I don't usually carry a spare tire that's why my tire repair kit is so extensive and Dr. Pepper, always carry spare Dr. Pepper. Now, YouTube's algorithm is nuts right now. They're not showing you my videos or any of your subscribers' videos unless you've clicked that bell button. I don't know why, it's stupid, but please do this. Click unsubscribe and then resubscribe to my channel. And when you do that, click the bell. They are unsubscribing people without their consent. I don't know why they're doing that, it's crazy, I know, but if you could do that, it would really help out around here. So, uh, did you get something out of the video? Did I miss anything? Was there something that you would have carried that I didn't? If there is, or if you'd just like to leave a comment, please do so below. I hope you got something out of this video, and I'll see you in the next one.